Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 with Botev Plovdiv. We are two games into the season, one game into the season, three games, some games into the season because we've played a league game. We've also played our first leg of the Europa League up against Trans. In between episodes, we have, like I said, we've played two matches. We've also signed a player, question mark, or have we sold someone? Can't remember. We loaned somebody out, that's it. Dimitar Balanov has gone out on loan to... Oberscht, Ober, Oberscht, shit, Ober, mm, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this name. Um, the the second half is not easier either. They're in the Bulgarian second league. The two matches that we have played in between episodes were both victories. We started off our Bulgarian first league preliminary phase up against Dunav and we beat them 4-1. Christian Dobrev with two goals, an own goal from Gene Ambrose and Todor Nedelev getting the fourth goal for us. We did concede thanks to Andrei Yordanov, but we pick up three points. It puts us second place in the table. Then up against Trans, who are from Lithuania or Latvia, one of the two. Estonia, it's neither of the two. We beat them 3-0, Todor Nedelev, Antonio Vutov and Vasil Shopov with the goals here. Today we are going to be up against Tsarkso Selo, maybe, and Trans from Estonia. I remember, because it was seconds ago. Now, if I'm perfectly honest, I don't know how good any of the teams are in this league. Apart from Ludogretz, Bero and CSKO Sofia, the rest of them I'm not particularly sure about. Levski, are they any good? I feel like they are, but maybe they're not. I probably should have checked this at the end of the last episode, or the start of the last episode would make a lot more sense. So, the season preview, we are expected to finish 4th, we are up against the team who are currently expected to finish 13th, so this should be a nice easy victory here. So Ludogorets, CSK, Sofia, Levski, Bota Plovdiv, Bero and Slavia Sofia are kind of the top 6. I am still at that stage of the save where I'm asking the assistant to pick a lot of the side. I am starting to recognise a lot of the names and I would honestly say most of the players that are in there are probably going to be the first choice anyway if I was to go through all the players. There are a few players who I feel like need to be getting close to the first team, like this man, Karakchanakov, maybe. He's, uh, he's very good, but so far has yet to play a game for us. He's on a backup contract. No, a rotation, sorry, which isn't too bad. Fodadore has still got his injury. He is rehabbing at the moment, so he will be back very soon. We've got, like I said, we've got a lot of the, the Polish players as well. Thomas Kweiker, we've got the goalkeeper and uh, a central midfielder here. But I think asking the assistant is probably the way to go at the moment. We have played pretty much... Our entire squad here, bar one player, who's Christian Dimitrov, who has not played yet. He's only 22 years old. He's been here a while, played 23 games since 2013, apparently. So, the starting lineup is going to be Daniel Kaiser in goal. Jonathan, Terziev, Pergov and Marin as the back four, with Kotev and Baltanov in the middle. Total Nedelev, Stanislav, it's Stanislav Shopov, there's Vasil on the bench. Antonio Vutov will be the attacking midfielders and Christian Dobrev will be the striker after he scored two in his first game in the league for us, giving us that nice victory away from home. It wasn't away from home, we were at home because we play in a car park, which you won't see in today's episode. But don't worry, because apparently Sarko Sello also play in a car park. They've got two stands, we've only got one, so uh, they're, I guess they're double as good as us at the moment. Although our stadium is technically a training complex. It's actually our training ground. I've had a look on Google Maps. It looks quite fancy. On Football Manager, doesn't look so great. Now, we started off against Dunav. I think it was Dunav. And we started off very, very well. We obviously scoring four goals against him. We did concede, which wasn't great. I'm hoping we will do the same against Sarko Sello. I'm, I still don't know whether that's pronounced right, but that's what we're going to go with. Ned level the corner after 17 and a half minutes. It's gone all the way through. Terziev's going to get the ball. Plays it across to Kotev. Now Baltanov with a bit of space. He takes a couple of touches and smashes it into the just big bit of concrete behind the goal. Throw on this time for Jonathan. Kotev gets tackled, but Jonathan gets the ball back. Where is he going to go? He's probably going to have to play it all the way back. Instead, he's found some space and plays it across to Lazar Marin on that left-hand side. He tries to cross it in and hits the first man. Baltanov saves his blushes across to Kotev Stanislav Shopov takes a number of touches gets a bit of space and tries to place it in that bottom corner but Campos has it covered it is still nil nil corner for Nedelev on that left hand side it's to Baltanov and it is one nil on the stroke of half time with 50 seconds left to play of the first half we have taken the lead and we seem to do really well from set pieces I do not know why we're doing so well from set pieces but it's I'm, I'm fine with it because so far, centre-backs have scored quite a few goals. That's a central midfielder scoring a goal there. 
just keep scoring from anywhere on the pitch would be great. It is half time, it is 1 0. We are currently top of the table. No changes at half time, we're going to stick with what we've got. The striker, Dobrev, will probably be coming off at some point because he's on a 6.4, and so far, I assume, hasn't had a single shot, let alone one on target. Lazar Marin's picked up his fourth yellow card of the season. Kaiser saves the free kick. I'm thinking if we had old uh, goal line technology, we might have seen that because that looked questionable. Yeah, somehow Lazar Marin has picked up five yellow cards, or four yellow cards, in five games. That's borderline impressive. Corner for Nedlev. I was about to do some stub stubs, some stubs, some subs as well. The ball has gone wide. Kotev was offside, so now we can do our subs. Dobrev off for Kermanowski. The, uh, the Polish striker, he's not match fit at the moment, which is one of the reasons why he's not really playing too much. Vutov off for Timotez Klups as well, and then we'll swap those two over. You're not, Annoyingly, you're not very good as an inside forward, so we're just going to keep you as a winger. Well, into the final 10 minutes, we've had a lot of shots. 21-9 on target, a lot of possession as well. Four minutes to play, and this is an actual highlight, and the ball has hit the post. Circo Cello, Sarko Cello, whatever they're bloody called, have nearly equalised late on in the game. They have a corner. Yordanov takes it. It's towards the back post. It's gone all the way through. Nishev's going to get the ball. He's got two Botev Plovdiv players for company. Panayad, that guy, he's gone for goal. It's a good save from Kaiser. It's going to be another corner. Why am I in Bulgaria? The names are so difficult to say. It's gone wide by Daskalov, maybe. Nedlev with a free kick. We've got seconds left to play, and Nedlev smashes the ball wide. It is going to end 1-0 against Sarko Selo. It's three points. It should have been a much better performance, but so far, two games into the league season, undefeated. Three games in the Europa League qualifiers as well, undefeated. Let's make it four and six wins out of six. So it is us and Arda who are top of the table. Who are Arda? Are they any good? Have they? I feel like they've just come up. Have they, just, they have literally just been promoted, and they are currently sat top of the table, admittedly. We are only two games in. They did do well against CSK 1948. Up next, we're going to be heading off to Estonia for the second match against Trans, which we are 3-0 up after the first leg. We have made it to Estonia just a couple of days after the last match. So match fitness, particularly early on in this save, is going to be very difficult. And I guess this season, because we didn't actually have a pre-season. Our pre-season match, uh, we had two pre-season matches before the Europa League started. And that was two matches that I threw together very quickly. Because if I left it to my assistant manager, which is what I normally do, he wouldn't have actually put any matches in there because it was too soon to the start of the season. So... Fitness is going to be a struggle for us at the moment. Hopefully, we can carry on our good form, which we're currently on. We are away against Trans in Estonia. We are 3-0 up after the first leg. It should be a comfortable victory. Even if we don't score, we will go through. And because we should be going through this quite comfortably, I have done a fair amount of rotation in this. In goal, it's going to be Alan Sherry, the Albanian, Jonathan Pergov, Dimitrov and Lazar Marin will be the back four today. Christian Dimitrov is going to be making his debut. And by debut, it's his debut for the season. Lashazar Kotev will be in the midfield with Baltanov. The midfield, sorry, the attacking midfield will be completely changed with Timotez Klups, Dimitar Tonev and Karachakanov. No, I'm going to change your name. I'm sorry, buddy. It's too long. You're just called Anton now. And up front is going to be the Polish striker, Kermanowski. On the bench, we do have a load of normal players. Actually, normal players, like the rest of them aren't normal. We've got a lot of first-team players on there. Kaiser's there, Todor Nedelev, Christian Dobrev, um, Thomas Kwajka's on there, Stanislav Shopov, Antonio Vutov. Also, very attacking-looking bench. Got no centre-backs. Probably need to change that. No, I don't. Kwajka can play as a centre-back. It's fine. A 4-4-2 then for Trans. Who is this man? His name is Muk Woods. He is an American who's playing in Estonia. He's not very good, but his name is Eric McWoods. Um, this, that confuses me a lot. He joined the club in 2018, so maybe at the start of the save. I think what I might do in the next episode, I might have a quick rundown. And by next episode, it'll be like a Botev Plovdiv Extra episode where I, I will have a rundown of the majority of the first team players. Just so if you're interested, you can have a look. If you're not interested and you just want to see how the season goes and how the save goes, then you don't have to watch it, basically. 
15 minutes on the clock and we do have a highlight but it is Trans who have the ball in their own half kicks it over the halfway line but headed forward it's going to come back towards us though. Tenno to Cams Cams is going to hold up play through ball to Skinjov which is a questionable name Sherry now with the ball inside his own six yard box Kotev to Pergov Pergov stands still back to Kotev. We're going to play it back to the keeper, aren't we? Pergov wants again to Jonathan. We need to get it forward because so far, passing it around, all we're doing is getting our pass accuracy up. Jonathan to Klops, who did a weird spin for no reason. Tonev forward to Kermanowski, who controls. He has to score. He doesn't score. Miritz makes a save. It is going to be a corner after 16 minutes. No Nedelev on the pitch for us today, so Anton is going to be stepping up to take it, and Dimitrov is there, and his header is just over the bar. Do we have two Dimitrovs on the pitch? We don't. We just have one Dimitrov. Okay. Anton with a free kick just before half time. It's saved. And what a wonderful stop that is from the defender. We do have a corner. We've got a minute and a half or so of the first half to play. Anton takes it. Kotev's there. Doesn't quite get it. Now Tonev to the corner taker. Anton, who has loads of space, who for some reason takes far too long on the ball, wins himself another corner. Anton once again steps up to take it. Where is it going to go this time? Towards the six-yard box, but it is now cleared, and Trans can get the ball upfield to Eric McWoods, the American. Holds up play, plays it across to Polyakov. What a tackle, but Cams gets the ball instead. Kicks into one of our players. Jonathan can now smash it clear. Kermanowski's chasing it down. We're not going to see the culmination of that highlight, because I'm guessing nothing really happened, and it's going to be nil-nil at halftime. We are doing okay. We're having a lot of shots, not actually having a lot of highlights and a lot of luck with these shots. Sticking with the same 11 as we started the match with, you'll notice, if you're new to me, you'll notice I don't often do subs at half-time unless someone's playing really badly. Kermanowski, one of those players who's borderline right now of playing really badly. Corner comes in and Trans have nearly scored. Jonathan kicks the ball behind for another corner. Tenno steps up to take the corner. It's gone deep towards Pergov, who heads the ball clear, but we have not got it clear far enough. Trans with the ball plays it across to a post, or post maybe, but that does end the highlight. They've got six yellow cards. This is just bloody filth we're playing against. Baltanov with the ball to Kotev. Tonev, who's picked up our yellow card. Klups controls it. Cross to Kermanowski. He's hit the base of the post and the ball is cleared. That is going to be Kermanowski's last involvement. We're going to bring on Dobrev. We've got some very tired players. Baltanov is going to come off for Stanislav Shopov, who can't really play as Mazala, but you're going to have to do it. Do we do our final sub as well? I'm thinking either Lazar Marin coming off. Yeah, we're going to do Marin for Zemyarski, who is uh, this guy. Gabriel Zemyarski is a 19-year-old, 18-year-old, sorry. 18-year-old left-back who's already played once in the Europa League. This is going to be a second game for us. This is what I mean by our fitness is going to be a big issue. Kotev and uh, Baltanov have played a lot of football already and we're only in like mid-August right now. So yeah, fitness is going to be a struggle. Three minutes left to play. We're into injury time. It's hopefully not going to be a nil-nil, but a nil-nil will be enough to get us through to the next round. Klups with the ball to Stanislav Shopov. Back to Klups. All the way across now to Zemyarski. He's going to run inside number 40. Keeps going with the ball. Loses out, unfortunately. Miritz can clear it. We've got two minutes to play, and there is a bit of gap down that left-hand side. Crosses into Skinyov. Skinyov crosses again. Elise is there, and we've just lost to an Estonian team called Trans, and we were 3-0 up and clearly the better side. Another highlight, or is this going to be the end of the match? It's looking like Zemyarski stole on the ball. Hold on. Zemyarski running down that right, loses out. The full-time whistle goes. It's a 1-0 defeat in Estonia. It is 3-1 on aggregate. We really should not have lost that game. My assistant manager says, I don't think we need to address anything specific. Nope, you lost. You're going to get an assertive. We got away with that today. Good. Few people listened. We don't quite know who we're playing in the next round, but it looks like we're going to be playing one of these potential sides. There's a lot. I'm not going to go through all of them. There's a lot of teams that we could be playing against. And the match will take place on the 7th of August. We are still in July. Okay, when is this draw taking place? When do we know who we're going to be playing against? On the 1st of August, we will have the draw, which would be tomorrow. Okay, we're going to go forward till the 1st of August to see who we're going to be having in the next episode, I guess, which is going to be probably Arda and Unknown. Well, after the first month, we've also managed to pick up an award. Christian Dobrev has picked up second place Young Player of the Month. We've not picked up an award at all, have we? Right, here is the draw. So, we are not seeded, which means we can play against one of 13 teams 
including PSV, AZ Alkmaar, Dundalk, and FK Kabala. I don't know how this works. I mean, they, the draw is extremely confusing, so we're just going to click next until we see our name turn up. There's not a lot of teams left, if I'm honest. Kilmarnock to Ustersons. Okay, we're at home. So, I don't know how this, how this works. So, are we a group two seeded or group one? Group two seeded or group one? I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. I'm just going to click next. We're up against AZ Alkmaar of Holland. That is going to be a difficult match for us to play. They are going to be very good, aren't they? Now, I know he's only 18 years old. He's not amazing. He's still better than our players, but he's not amazing. That is obviously one of their players. I always have a look at their goalkeeper, who is Marco Bizot, who is very good. Jonas Svensson, their right back, who's also very good. Okay, I think we might be struggling with this one. Gus Till, he's, he's filth. He's actually filth. So, our Europa League story might be ending in the next episode. Which, as I mentioned, will be up against Arda. And now, unknown, is AZ Alkmaar. It's going to be away from home as well. So, that's going to do it for this episode. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time.